best example of a conservative filmmaker that's respected. I mean, yeah. that guy made The Unforgiven. A too. massive talent. Yeah, massive. Massive talent. And very, very conservative. Deeply. Yeah, so he's probably the best example of a conservative filmmaker that's, ex he's excelled in Hollywood. The Andy Griffith Show, an iconic 1960s television, continues to warm hearts thanks to reruns and DVDs. This sitcom takes us to Mayberry, North Carolina, a charming small town filled with quirky characters and a comforting small town vibe. While the show occasionally recast or wrote out some residents, there was one character in particular that Andy Griffith himself always resented. So who was this unwelcome addition to Mayberry? Keep watching to find out. Disagreements on set. The Andy Griffith Show, which ran from 1960 to 1968, launched Andy Griffith into superstardom. Mayberry itself was inspired by Andy's childhood memories of Mount Airy, North Carolina, which has a population of around 10,000 today. The show's characters were drawn from real people, Andy knew, and classic small-town archetypes. The true magic of The Andy Griffith Show lay in its ability to offer heartwarming storylines and a familiar small-town backdrop. It consistently drew viewers for CBS, never falling below seventh place in the Nielsen ratings and even reaching number one by its finale. But just like many television shows of its era, The Andy Griffith Show wasn't immune to off-screen conflicts. While Andy's character, Sheriff Andy Taylor, got along with everyone, the same couldn't always be said for the actor himself. Andy Griffith, a passionate actor with a perfectionist mindset, approached the show with a clear vision that sometimes led to clashes. One of the most significant on-screen partnerships was between Andy and Don Knotts, who brought the beloved Barney Fife to life. Their on-screen chemistry was undeniable, setting a gold standard for comedic duos. However, their off-screen relationship was more complex, marked by respect and occasional friction. Don Knotts, despite his brilliance as Barney, was known to be sensitive and insecure about his character's role. He sometimes felt overshadowed by Andy's larger-than-life personality, both on set and off. Rumors about disagreements regarding screen time grew more common, with Knotts wanting more focus for Barney. Despite these issues, the bond between Griffith and Knotts ran deep. Their friendship, established before the series, was only strengthened by their shared passion for acting. They recognized their on-screen chemistry as something special, which often resolved any off-screen conflicts. Originally signed for five seasons, both Andy and co-star Don Knotts planned to move on after their contracts ended. Don, however, pursued other projects when his time was up, conflicting with a pre-existing movie deal. Jack Burns replaced him as Deputy Barney Fife in 1965. However, if there was one relationship that created conflict, it was between Andy Griffith and Francis Bavier, who played Aunt B. Bavier, a seasoned actress, arrived on set with established expectations and working methods. She meticulously approached her craft and often disagreed from Griffith's vision for scenes. Despite having logged more Mayberry years than any other character, having played Aunt B for 10 years, and even winning an Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Comedy Actress for the role in 1967, Bavier disliked her character and openly resented the role. Their disagreements weren't limited to artistic interpretations, but spilled over into personal interactions. Tensions occasionally reached a point where both actors limited their off-screen communication to maintain a working environment. Set stories suggest Bavier often felt isolated. The friendship that thrived among the show's cast didn't always extend to her. This perceived or real isolation worsened the differences between her and Griffith. Their disagreements became so pronounced at times that they reportedly communicated through intermediaries rather than directly. To their credit, both actors ensured their professional commitment trumped personal differences. Viewers would never suspect the off-screen tension, given the warmth and authenticity of their on-screen interactions. This shows their dedication to their roles and respect for their audience. It's important to note that while Griffith had his disagreements, 
He also had deep bonds with many cast members. Thankfully, they reconciled later in life, acknowledging their differences as water under the bridge. The character he didn't want. The Andy Griffith Show had a close-knit cast, with many friendships enduring long after the series finale. However, like any creative collaboration where strong personalities and distinct visions work together, conflicts were inevitable. From the show's inception, Andy Griffith held a clear idea for his central character, Sheriff Andy Taylor. Though Andy held some creative control, he couldn't always get his way. This resulted in a character he actively disliked being added to the show, not once, but twice. The Andy Griffith show's initial concept was changed greatly from the final product. As a stand-up comedian, Andy decided to incorporate some of his routines. Originally inspired by his appearance on The Danny Thomas Show, the show's premise involved a single figure, Sheriff Andy Taylor, wearing many different hats. One of the running gags in the pilot showed that in Mayberry, he'd be the sheriff, justice of the peace, newspaper editor, and even the mayor. Thankfully, this multitasking, Andy was eventually scaled back to just sheriff and justice of the peace. However, this change left out an important role, the role of Mayberry's mayor. Show creator Sheldon Leonard believed this was a major oversight. He pushed for a mayor character to serve as a superior to Sheriff Andy. Despite their usual friendliness, Andy strongly opposed this addition. Andy argued that a small-town mayor wouldn't hold authority over a county official like a sheriff. In his mind, the power dynamic should be reversed. In Andy's original concept, Sheriff Taylor held the ultimate authority. He'd hold Mayberry together by resolving disputes, guiding residents, offering wisdom during crises. This idea was of a typical rural community where lines between official titles and community roles blurred. The sheriff wasn't just law enforcement, he was a friend, mediator, even a counselor. However, as the show developed, the idea of introducing a mayor felt more and more like a necessity. This addition added depth to the town's hierarchy and introduce some interesting new dynamics. The mayor could provide a counterpoint to Andy, offering an official perspective to balance Andy's informal, instinct-driven approach. But this decision wasn't supported by everyone. Andy Griffith himself opposed this strongly. He felt adding a mayor diluted the central authority and moral clarity he envisioned for Sheriff Taylor. Another figure of authority could overshadow the essential qualities he wanted to convey. Not only that, but Griffith was concerned about the mayor's potential relationship with the sheriff. Would they be allies or rivals? Would the mayor support or challenge Andy's decisions? While this could create compelling storylines, Griffith worried they might take away from the show's core themes of unity, community, and moral simplicity. This opinion is why Andy always felt the character didn't work. Whether his logic held water is debatable. However, the decision to include a mayor wasn't solely driven by narrative considerations. In the 1960s, television was evolving, with a push for shows to reflect a semblance of structural realism. While Mayberry was fictional, grounding it with recognizable institutions like a mayor's office gave it credibility for viewers. Plus, the presence of a mayor opened doors for comedic situations, conflicts, and resolutions that could be explored in future episodes. Despite Andy's concerns, the character of the mayor was introduced and Mayberry saw several come and go over time. Viewership remained strong with the addition of a mayor, and the network considered it a success. Each brought their own personality, quirks, and dynamic with Sheriff Taylor. Some bordered on buffoonish, while others exuded a touch more competence. But invariably, their relationship with the sheriff became a defining aspect of their time in office. Among these unforgettable figures was Mayor Pike, the first to hold the position inspired by a respected businessman from Andy's hometown. Interestingly, Andy shared a common personality trait with his character, Sheriff Andy. Just like Andy, Sheriff Taylor wouldn't appreciate a bossy mayor either. This dislike wasn't based on personal animosity, but rather, in his opinion, on a logical inconsistency in what the show's hierarchy should be like. Mayor Pike, however, only lasted for 11 episodes across the first two seasons before disappearing from Mayberry. He wasn't known for his efficiency or leadership skills. Yet, his simplicity provided a comedic counterpoint to the level-headed Sheriff Taylor. 
While Andy served as the voice of reason and morality, Mayor Pike was often portrayed as flustered and bumbling, a mayor whose well-meaning decisions often led to comical predicaments. His constant reliance on Sheriff Taylor for even trivial matters reinforced Andy's central role in the town. It also mirrored the dynamics of small-town politics, where personal and professional lives often intertwined. The seasoned actor Dick Elliott brought Mayor Pike to life with a unique energy. His distinctive voice and recognizable face made him a memorable presence. Elliott's extensive experience across various mediums in the entertainment industry lent a certain gravitas to the character. While Pike was often the source of comic relief, Elliott's portrayal ensured he wasn't simply a caricature. In his hands, Mayor Pike became as real as any resident of Mayberry, with his own ambitions, insecurities, and affections. Elliott's seasoned approach stemmed from his long and successful career. Having begun in vaudeville, he transitioned seamlessly into film and television, often playing roles that showcased his impeccable comedic timing. His wide-eyed expressions, coupled with his talent for delivering lines for maximum comedic impact, made him a beloved part of The Andy Griffith Show. However, just as viewers were settling into the humorous dynamic between Mayor Pike and Sheriff Taylor, tragedy struck Mayberry. In 1961, Dick Elliott's passing marked a sudden end for the character of Mayor Pike. The loss was deeply felt by the cast, crew, and fans who had come to adore his portrayal of the lovable, if somewhat inept, mayor. Elliott's unexpected departure presented a significant challenge for the show's creators. The void left by his character was palpable, and the decision on how to address it required both sensitivity and responsibility. Unlike other shows that might have recast the role or written the character out quietly, the Andy Griffith Show chose an approach that reflected the show's core values, sincerity, and respect. Mayor Pike was retired as a character. The next episodes subtly acknowledge the absence of the beloved mayor, allowing both the character and the actor behind him to gracefully fade into Mayberry's history. This started the way for a new chapter with the introduction of Mayor Stoner, Mayberry Mayors. The role of mayor in the Andy Griffith Show wasn't initially part of the plan. However, Two actors brought the position to life, each with their own unique take on small-town leadership. The first Mayberry mayor was portrayed by Dick Elliott, born Richard Damon Elliott in 1886 in Salem, Massachusetts. Standing at a mere five and four and carrying a bit of extra weight throughout his life, Elliott carved a niche for himself playing authority figures, judges, mayors, reporters, policemen, characters whose presence audiences recognized even if they couldn't quite place the name. His filmography has over 240 films, and his prolific career began in 1933 with Central Airport. The small screen also welcomed him, with appearances on shows like Dick Tracy, My Little Margie, Adventures of Superman, and even I Love Lucy. Sadly, Dick Elliott passed away from natural causes in 1961 at the age of 75. This occurred during the second season of The Andy Griffith Show, with his final episode airing two months later. The show never officially addressed his character's disappearance, leaving fans to speculate about Mayor Pike's fate. Did he move away? Or perhaps even worse? The spot left by Dick Elliott wouldn't stay empty for long. Parley Bear took over the mayoral mantle as Roy Stoner. Born in 1914 in Salt Lake City, Bear was passionate about acting from a young age. He began his career in radio, where his distinct voice made him a recognizable figure across various shows. He honed his craft at West High School and the University of Utah, eventually establishing himself as a respected character actor. His impressive resume consists of over 15,000 radio programs, 60 movies, and 1,600 television shows across a career spanning six decades. His transition to television was smooth, bringing with him a deep understanding of character development and a knack for comedic timing both of which proved invaluable in his portrayal of Mayor Stoner. Notably, he played Chester in the original production of Gunsmoke, Darby on The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, and even lent his voice to one of the Keebler elves. While his face may not have been instantly recognizable, his powerful voice likely resonated with audiences across the airwaves. Mayor Stoner was the opposite of his predecessor, where Pike was often depicted as bumbling and indecisive, leaning heavily on, Andy's guidance, Stoner was assertive and followed the rule book. He exuded a bureaucratic air and frequently clashed with Andy's laid-back approach to law and order. 
These clashes, however, were a clever move by the show's creators. Stoner wasn't merely a replacement for Pike. He was a character in his own right, bringing a distinct flavor to Mayberry's political scene. The tension and humor that arose from their contrasting styles added some freshness to the series. Bear's approach added some authenticity to the show. He didn't portray Stoner as simply an antagonist to Andy. Instead, he showed him as a man genuinely concerned about the town's well-being, although through a more bureaucratic method. This nuanced take made Stoner more than just a comedic foil for Andy. It added depth to the character. Bear's seasoned experience allowed him to tap into the subtleties of Mayor Stoner. From moments of vulnerability to flashes of humor, Bear ensured Stoner was multidimensional and relatable. Off-screen, Bear's friendship with the cast was clear, particularly with Andy Griffith. Their mutual respect and admiration translated beautifully on screen, making the disagreements between Andy and Mayor Stoner all the more believable. Not only that, but Bear's contribution to The Andy Griffith Show wasn't limited to his on-screen presence. His vast and successful career enriched the show in other ways. Younger cast members often looked up to him as a mentor, drawing from his knowledge of the entertainment industry and the legacy of The Andy Griffith Show itself. Parley Bear continued to act until his passing in 1997 at the age of 88 due to complications from a stroke. Similar to his predecessor, Mayor Stoner's departure from Mayberry also went unaddressed in the later episodes of the show, from pilot to television icon. The journey of The Andy Griffith Show began not in Mayberry, but on the set of The Danny Thomas Show. Producer Sheldon Leonard, recognizing Andy Griffith's talent, teamed up with Danny Thomas to create a pilot showcasing Griffith's potential for television success. At the time, Griffith, already a star on Broadway, film, and radio, was interested in the prospect of television. The William Morris Agency, recognizing Griffith's rural background and past success portraying rustic characters, enthusiastically supported the project. After initial discussions in New York City, Griffith headed west to Los Angeles to film the pilot. On February 15, 1960, the episode Danny Meets Andy Griffith aired as part of The Danny Thomas Show. Here, audiences were introduced to Sheriff Andy Taylor of Mayberry, North Carolina, played by Griffith as he pulled over Danny Williams, played by Thomas, for running a stop sign. Interestingly, the pilot also featured glimpses of future Mayberry staples. Francis Bavier and Ron Howard, who would later become Aunt B, and Opie Taylor, respectively, made their appearances as townspeople Henrietta Perkins and Sheriff Taylor's son. The pilot proved to be a hit. General Foods, sponsor of The Danny Thomas Show, had the privilege of first refusal on the spinoff and immediately committed to the project. So, on October 3, 1960, The Andy Griffith Show officially debuted, went on its journey to become a television icon, the charm of The Andy Griffith Show. As the turbulent 1960s unfolded, America was on the verge of major social change. This was one of the few shows that offered a comforting retreat to a simpler time, a show destined to become a timeless classic, The Andy Griffith Show. Set in the fictional town of Mayberry, North Carolina, the series brought a strong sense of nostalgia. It painted a picture of a place untouched by the modern world's anxieties, a haven where the life revolved around the close-knit community. Full of gentle humor, endearing characters, and heartwarming stories, the show was a hit with viewers, providing a comforting escape from the decade's tumultuousness. From the bumbling deputy Barney Fife to the wise and nurturing Aunt Bee, they became living memories of a cherished past that Griffith held dear. The Andy Griffith Show was more than just entertainment, and this was clearly reflected in the show's astounding viewership numbers. Sheriff Andy Taylor was the heart of the show. He wasn't only the lead, he was Mayberry's moral compass. His calm demeanor, problem-solving, and genuine care for his neighbors taught the viewers some important life lessons. Whether dispensing wisdom to his son Opie or gently reining in Barney Fife's over-enthusiasm, Andy's presence was a grounding force. He showed incredible patience and kindness, making him not just a fan favorite, but a role model for other characters within the narrative. His relationship with Deputy Barney Fife was a case of opposites attract. Barney's impulsiveness, tendency to exaggerate minor offenses, and frequent boundary overstepping were perfectly balanced by Andy's calm authority. Their friendship was a lesson in understanding, patience, 
and the beauty of just getting along with others and seeing their positive side. Not only that, but Andy's role as a single father to Opie Taylor added depth to his character. Their heartfelt relationship often showed viewers how they dealt with complex problems. Whether facing school troubles, misunderstandings, or the challenges of growing up, these father-son moments offered viewers a raw, genuine look into parenthood. It showed that while Andy served as Mayberry's sheriff, he was first and foremost a father to Opie. But Mayberry wasn't a one-man show. This town was filled with life, and every character contributed to it in different special ways. There was Aunt B, whose maternal warmth, culinary skills, and occasional naivety made her the anchor of the Taylor household. Her struggles, whether related to feeling needed or her entrepreneurial adventures, were relatable and added depth to her character. The town also had colorful characters as residents, each with their distinct quirks. Otis Campbell, the town drunk, was treated with kindness and patience despite his flaws. Floyd the barber, with his love of gossip and slow, deliberate speech, ensured every visit to his shop was a memorable one. And who could forget the darling duo of Gomer and Goober Pyle? Their innocence and often comical misunderstandings made Mayberry's residents more endearing to the viewers. Over the years, The Andy Griffith Show went on to become a cultural phenomenon. Its influence can be seen in countless shows that followed, trying to capture the essence of community and the bonds that connect people. Themes of friendship, family, and the simple joys of life, central to the show, became the requirements for wholesome entertainment. Plus, the series showcased the power of character-driven narratives, where each individual, with their strengths, flaws, and aspirations, contributed to the collective story. Despite its period setting, the show's themes are universal and timeless. Generations of viewers have found solace in the escapism it offers, a world with a slower pace of life where problems seem more manageable and laughter feels more genuine. In a world constantly changing, The Andy Griffith Show is a reminder of the constants that remain, the importance of community, the value of integrity, and the enduring nature of human connection. The Andy Griffith Show's magic continued beyond its eight-season run. After Andy Griffith's departure, the show was renamed Mayberry RFD, with Ken Berry and Buddy Foster taking the reins. Though the format shifted, the spirit of Mayberry lived on for an additional three seasons, getting to 78 episodes before ending in 1971. The show's enduring popularity is clear in its constant presence on television. Reruns continue to find a home on channels like TV Land, MeTV, The CW, and Sundance TV. While most airings are edited to accommodate more commercials, Sundance TV occasionally airs the uncut versions, offering viewers the full Mayberry experience. For those seeking a deeper dive, the complete series is available on DVD and Blu-ray, and select streaming services like Amazon Prime and Paramount Plus offer it intermittently. Every year, Andy Griffith's hometown of Mount Airy, North Carolina, celebrates the beloved sitcom with Mayberry Days, a festival that allows fans to step into the world of their favorite characters. While Andy's reservations about certain aspects of the show, like the inclusion of a mayor, were documented, his vision wasn't the only one shaping Mayberry. He saw Sheriff Taylor as the only authority figure, making the mayor somewhat redundant. However, as the series evolved, it became clear that characters like Mayors Pike and Stoner made the show better, not worse. What are some of your favorite memories of the Andy Griffith Show? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this. See you in the next one.